Welcome to Nameless Debate Radio, where radioactivity is contagious. You can join us in broadening our minds on the Nameless Debates Discord via the link below, and even feature here yourself, if you've got what it takes. No, but I can even extend that to the individual set of genes. So, for example, I'm not concerned if my genes spread on with another white person. The point is, is my genes have spread on. Then the other problem is if we go higher than our 2.1% birth rate, what happens when you have an overpopulation crisis? Is that an acceptable point where we stop well, having that many kids? Well, that's one of the ideas around why we have a, a cultural, but now you're a asking cultural something... idea where population tends to t- population tends to level out at a certain at a certain point in societies because they reach a point where they can't sustain anymore. There there's shifting factors that result in a limitation in population when a culture can't sustain the amount of population it has. N- not only that, but I mean now we're talking about something that is hundreds of years away. That like come on, keep it at least a little bit in the scope of the age we're living in here. Okay, how about the fact that right now in the age that we're living in, overpopulation is one of the la- is one of the leading factors in global warming, one of the things killing our planet. So wouldn't limiting the amount of population in our world, wouldn't that actually be beneficial to us in the long run, while still maintaining well, yeah, the ability for us? Okay, no, 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 now you're talking about... White it. people aren't the problem there. Yeah, White people yeah, yeah. are not the biggest race on the planet. So if you, if you were to implement a policy around that, it would be against you because you'd be limiting the population of uh, Asian people and Indian people. And black people, because black people are about to surpass all of them. So how about, if we want policies like that, how about we stop giving aid to the third world, huh? And see how the the numbers drop. Ooh, it's got all quiet now. What the fuck? Where are we we giving aid in the third world? Is is this is this you? Uh, yeah, yeah, at a right. We the West. I honestly world. don't know about this. Like, where are we giving yeah, aid in the, the uh, America? Oh, let's let's just pull a stat. America Fuck yearly. Me. America yearly. Let's let's Google something here. Let's just. Oh Google my God! Oh, wow. Okay. Well, no, this is something I've actually not heard about. Yeah, America okay. gives. America funds the entire U.S. Sorry, Klaus, you, said, you said that America yeah. funds the entire U.S.? Yeah, no, the America Fire funds almost the entire U.N. The amount of money that America donates to the world in terms of economic security and uh, military security is astronomical compared to the rest of uh, anywhere. Anywhere. Like, it blows everyone out of the water. The entire Western alliance of, of, of fucking NATO? France, uh, yeah, whatever you want to call it, France, Britain, even the five eyes, you get New Zealand, Australia, everything, like, we're strong. But without America, we're barely as strong as China. Well, actually, in some regards, China is actually stronger than the U.S. No, it's, well, it's, you, all, it's, all, it's all for sites, Ponzi scheme. China is just, right now. Well, but that should scare the fucking shit out of you. Dude, I don't. Okay, um, it's 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 actually in the billions, if not trillions. Yeah, I can't I can't find a specific number. The U.S. role in food aid. Because it's spread out, it's so difficult to find a a global number. You have like, oh, that country is that 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 country that gives that much to that program. Here we go. How much aid? If we stop, yeah, go ahead. How much aid does the U.S. give to other countries? Because of the size of the U.S. federal budget, the 0.7% of budget put forth to foreign aid totals $23 billion in 2012. That's uh, one year, U.S. By the way. foreign aid does not go to government due to skepticism of corruption in other countries, but this is a Wikipedia article literally titled United States Foreign Aid. But so 2012, it was $23 billion. And that's the United States. It's not even Europe. So Currently, do, do like- you understand? Yeah, and I'm currently looking at another source from the United States. Um, it's a statistic uh, quoted by uh, Statista. Um, United States um, donated $1.6 billion to the UN, while India, right behind it, and what you would, would you consider that a third world country? Well, but that's just the UN. Second this world. is obviously, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, you okay. Are, yeah. okay, so India as a whole donates $1.2 billion to the UN. Yes, and, and and my point is, is if you stop and what about the UAE? doing that, if, is, okay. if you stop do that, you would curb the African population like a motherfucker. Okay, how about the fact that Kenya, an African, a place in Africa, donates 4.445 yeah. 4, million 
uh, it's in top 10 contributors. How about the UAE? A lot of okay, places so consider you're, places. Yes, in you're talking about UN contributions. I will admit I could be wrong when I said then that the America props up the UN. They may do so. I'm not sure what uh, numbers you're drawing up specifically, but if you were to throw military contributions, I'm pretty sure America can top out anybody who con yeah. contributes to the UN. Well, America also contributes weapons to third world countries, which actually contributes problems to them. Yeah, yeah, I'm well. Yeah, but anyways, that's that's beside. Back on topic. Reagan yeah. did nothing wrong. <sighs> well, but anyways, back on topic. Yeah, so what was the topic before I said um, well, how about just cut off third world eight and then that will consume um, birth uh, rates? Birth rates from uh, from Africa from all going over the top. Yeah. Yeah. Well the world population is said to is said to level out at a certain point anyway. Right? Yeah, yeah, said yeah. No, first see them believe. Yeah. Well, well we the, have the, statistics the, by this because especially since a lot of the like basically the um, the major amount of like you know, population boom was based on baby boomer baby boomers after World War II. Like the only reason that we really have this huge spike in population is because of the whole baby boomers thing. And the reason that's starting to level out or decrease now is because we don't have this huge like push because it's not right after dude, a gigantic what the fuck war. Are people you are talking starting about to... Africa logic. Is ever... Dude, <laughs> Africa is about to double its population. Are you... what the fuck? Boomers are such a small part of this. Africa is about to justify, now is about yeah, and I'm saying that right now the reason that population is starting to cap out and why it's starting to decline is start, because it's starting to decline is because we don't have this massive spike in our population. It's not capping growth. out. It's not capping out. It's my fucking point. It's not. Where where are you maybe getting this capping out bullshit? Okay, maybe not capping out. Capping out might have been a bad well, term. No, to no, use, no, but no. leveling out. So the point that I was that's what I meant. Is that there's there's estimates that somewhere around 11 million or so. I'll have to pull up something for this, but there's estimates that in the double digit billion, 11 million or 11 billion, when we start to hit the double digit billion, that the Earth will actually uh, level itself out because of starvation and. And, uh, lack of resources, etc. <laughs> okay, and, and it's it's kind of like in a way that the Western world has, like the Western world hits a certain point where we we have leveled out our population and we we've adopted a different breeding strategy where we produce uh, less children of a higher quality rather than more children of of a lesser quality, like you see in other nations that are still developing. Um, but that's the hope uh, amongst, I guess, whatever progressive groups is that once those other groups in Africa or whatever, et cetera, are brought up to a, a higher standard of living, then their population will eventually level out. <laughs> okay. So while that's happening, we're importing billions of people. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, billions, I'm saying millions, excuse me. So results, yeah, I already stated again, my opinion on immigration. Results exactly the same. Hey, I already stated my opinion on immigration. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that doesn't mean it's going to be executed in your liberal government, my dude. <laughs> yeah, but I don't trust your benevolent dictator to do it either. Who said that there has to be a dictator? Fascism doesn't have to have well, a dictator. Well, dictator, monarchy, ruling council, council, aristocracy. Yeah, okay. The reason why you say that is because you but like, well, freedoms, well, well, and it is, it is going. Because, well, like, are you going to get to like Alec? But so, yeah, of course. But so, who's going to do that? Are you going to get a computer like the communists do, where they say like, oh, well, we can get like a fucking Dell computer to design the perfectly distributed system, like centralized? It could department. be. I don't know. It's it's it could be a a group of people, uh, higher ups, like very intelligence, at the top of their fields, deciding uh, this. It could be a, fa <laughs> a fascist leader. It could be a computer. I don't know. Oh, come on, come on. Fourteen you, you, is the is is my goal. I don't have yeah. all the answers. Yeah, but and and, and that's what you've heard. Like, you, you, I remember me and you joked fucking about Dugan for a long time, right? Like, <laughs> like Alexander Dugan is all about this. Oh well, like there is a fourth political position. I just don't know how to explain it yet. Don't worry, it'll come. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, f fair enough. You could you could say that. I'm not saying. I mean, the alt right is developing. I, I told you this, right? It's a big. Oh wait, I may have, maybe I haven't told you this. I, well, I was talking to other commies, right? And trying to explain this. The alt right is is basically having a brawl amongst itself, and we're constantly pushing each other and trying to find the, the best solutions, right? The best uh, answers. And I don't think. I mean, the alt right again. Now, now, now you've mind doing it. Fuck it, Christ. Basically, the the brawl is going to end up in some 
want to go with, right? But until that time comes, no, we're not gonna move. We're not gonna do anything. We we and 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 figure everything out is also a bit autistic because I don't even think just just have that is uh, all figured out as well. I don't even think the liberals did it uh, when, when when they started their system. So I don't think it's necessary to figure everything out. But what I do agree on is that the alt right is n not figured out what global right wing idea they want to push, and that's why we have all these subgroups in the alt right essentially vying for power, trying to prove that they're the best. Yeah. That's what I would say. Boom. Boom? Uh, just boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, no, I'm just I'm just rolling over my mic here real quick to see if there's any last thing we can touch on because I feel like we've we've done really good here. It's incomplete. I mean, unless, I mean, unless, I mean, unless we want to go on the J JQ, which... Well, I was gonna. Then. I was gonna say I've got lots of defenses of liberalism actually still lined up because I feel like after I let after I let Trump's mustache go for so long that I should drop. Yeah, some but more why don't you do that? Then? I mean, if you want to talk about liberalism, well, then I mean, no, go no, ahead. No, but, but but at first, I, it's because I, I wanted you two to have the conversation, so I didn't want to interrupt with all that. Okay, so well, I've got all these notes, but no, let's let's take it that way because it was one of my notes as well. At right, I'm going to start this position with you because we've touched on it at points. Then, from your knowledge, could you please explain what the JQ is? Jewish question basically means, um, like, is plot by Jews in order to create a in order to create a globalist society, or at least this is a conspiracy theory peddled by far writers. It's a, uh, from my knowledge of it, it is a global conspiracy pedal. Um, which is peddled by Jews in order to make a globalist society in order to prevent people from seeing the quote-unquote truth of what Jews are doing to society. That's my understanding of what it is. I have not discussed it much with people. I mainly focus on the first two questions that we've talked about, so this would honestly be a learning point for me. Um, first of all, I'm on the fence with the JQ. Um, I don't... I don't know what what to do with them. It's uh, it's a difficult question. Okay, but... hold on. When you mean on the fence, you mean as in the fence of you don't know what the solution is, or do you accept the JQ as even being a question? Now, now I first need to explain what the JQ actually is. It's Jews expressing their genes in their environment, and that is a problem because Jews are nomadic. I see, what you're, no? I see what you're saying, and I'm not going to touch that because it's a very <laughs> spicy. <laughs> so I agree with everything Adorite, uh, Adorite said, and uh, feel free to elaborate, though. All right. Y you don't think that what I just said is uh, is correct, I, that that's I, not... I, I, I know Honestly, I, like, from me, coming so from me, I'd think maybe both are right. I like this okay, is so I, I know what you're saying but i don't like to and this is my general idea with all because because if you really think about it the, the jq is really just an extension of ra racial race realism right with elements of uh you know just a different uh, strategy Sh involved sure to it. yes definitely but the, the big thing with me is that the race realism well it i still accept it as an idea it's not a definitive factor by any means i'm not a determinist um i, I so i don't think that the jq holds any more example because for every jewish person that you can show me that you claim is is acting in such a um a, a way like a critique of the culture uh, outlined by kevin mcdonald kind of way i i know jews who in no way act like that whatsoever so i don't understand why the the, the painting the racial brush situation exists because there are so many opportunities i, I think it's because i think it's because of the more like christian side of the far or alt or uh, or alt right no christians actually love jews so that yeah well let's yeah what? let's yeah, let Trump's. A lot of like hardcore Christians hate Jews because apparently like they killed Jesus or something. At least that's my understanding of it. Let, well, go ahead. No, Trump. when you go when you go into, especially like American politics, right? Yeah. Mostly the the the, the Christian vote. I mean, the Christians like oh, our greatest, you know, as greatest. They love Israel, yeah. our best ally in the Middle East. Israel did it's, nothing wrong. It's it's fucking disgusting. <laughs> It's it's like um, don't don't speak yeah. bad about the the great Israel. Yeah, yeah, like are you an anti semite? I don't know. I'm sorry. It, yeah. Um, basically, it it it's 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 very difficult because first of all, you have a lot of uh, 
Uh, it is uh, a very, very naughty Jews at the top of the pyramids. And they're overrepresented there based on the population demographic. So uh, the, they're X on a percentage in the population, but they hold a massively disproportionate amount of power that, you know, based on that um, demographic. And people find that very suspicious. Um, on, on top of that, they think that this is not beneficial to the state because uh, Jews are not loyal to a single state. Not even actually Israel, because there are a lot of Jews that don't even think that Israel should exist. So they really have no allegiance to the state that they're living in. And if, if, if they see that it's no more beneficial to live in their state, they'll up and move to another state. So they have no vested interest in keeping it great. Plus, on top of that, there is the genetic aspect of it where Jews, because they have been a nomadic tribe for so long, are going to um, basically have an effect on the society that they're living in. And because of their culture that they hold very dear, most of them anyway, um, they're going to have a certain effect on the host culture, especially when they hold a lot of institutions like uh, media, politics, banking, etc. You cannot hold these positions in in power in, in, the, in the nation and not influence that nation. So therefore, um, there are a lot of people that advocate that Jews should not hold set positions because they are not loyal to the state. Okay, well, my main and to contention... The okay, well, my main contention with that is that you are making an assumption on people based on race or religion. genetics yeah and religion. yeah like yeah which the religion aspect like just that's why i'm just sort of like ooh, religion like i'm not religious but yeah um but you're making an assumption that people aren't going to be loyal simply based on their genetics and it, like, no it th th that's not what what the genetics thing is they're not going to be because they're separate people they're genetics are, is, is the way they express themselves in that society. Um, guilt what do you mean? for example. Or the, the, <sighs> fuck, this, this is a lot of lecture and, and literature. And, and, and wait, 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 wait. Before you go on, can I ask one thing? Yeah. Is it the Holocaust? What? Is it the Holocaust? You're about for, to reference. No. Okay, all right, continue. So, so, so basically, if you look in the Torah, there's a lot guilt and and, and 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 all that kind of stuff and then they they pro i mean not project uh they, they try to incorporate that uh into their society also open borders because the jew thrives in in open borders they thrive in in a society where they can do uh merchant what is it merchant teal i don't know merchant that, the english, mer mer mercantile. Uh, sorry I, i'm not a native english speaker uh merchantile um activities and the, the easiest way to do that is in a capitalist system where there are no borders so it's very beneficial for them to do so to 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 influence the states to to bring about these conditions even though people do not want these conditions well if people didn't want those conditions and why are some of them actually pushing for it? people who aren't jews cuz let's face it jews are, like worldwide are a huge minor minority like majority exactly. of them are in israel the reason why is i just explained to you they have a power when it comes to media i mean hollywood's pretty much overrun by them it's you can't do anything in hollywood unless you're rubbing shoulders with some jews it's and and that affects the the moves they make people consume these movies and therefore they take over some of that mentality uh, even if it's not their own uh, or, or they get corrupted by it in some way shape or form so they are having a profound effect on society my question then is do you have a list of famous directors who are jewish or oh, list God, of producers don't, or don't yeah don't ask them for this don't ask don't ever ask the alt right for question for them to list the amount of jewish people that are in position well no like like do you have do you like off the top of your head do you have five who are jewish five famous ones who produce very big movies 
no, because I am not Weinstein. The Weinstein, the, yeah. Uh, the Weinstein, the uh, with the silver, silver. Uh, what was it? The Nathan, whatever silver, who was responsible for the Matrix films. Um, was Weinstein? One sec. Uh, yeah, Weinstein owned, owned Miramax. What do you mean? You gonna say that name's not Jewish? Uh, look at J.J. Abrams. He's Jewish. He's just oh, directed yeah, two Star Wars movies, or he's about to direct another Star Wars movie, and he already directed one on top of doing the Star Trek movies. Um, the, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I'm not that like it's it's the, a ridiculous amount. It's a ridiculous amount. It, it's not even worth asking them about because the whole argument from this actually just stems from the. Um, William Kaufness had a critique that he issued from uh, Kevin McDonald's critique of the culture, or sorry, a counter to that uh, critique of the culture, cr culture of critique that he released about the JQ, or the idea that Jewish people are genetically inclined or culturally inclined to act in this way as a, as a parasitic group that uh, thrives off of the host nation. But the, the critique of that whole there's a bunch of jewish people in high positions of power it's just because they're genetically selected to be a high achieving group yep. in terms See, of the, uh, and this and and is this is my and main and they exist in a meritocracy so it's not a yep. surprise that they're disproportionately represented they're 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 they have a higher iq than your anglo-saxons on average so of course they're in better positions in in, in government or in business etc et etc et See, this is what i mean with with um i'm on the fence about this because this is also crossed the Ashkenazi Jew has uh, an IQ average of 115, yeah, which so makes sense. Yeah, a full that, standard that, deviation above the fucking average white dude. Exactly. So it makes sense that they would be um, more prevalent in, 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 in all these institutions. But the, the sheer amount is, is what, what boggles the mind. And, and But actually, it's actually kind of interesting, uh, classless, because if you acknowledge this, then you acknowledge the differences between IQ and race. Well, of course I acknowledge. Well, then the question I'd, I'd have to ask there is. Oh, hold on. Let me defend myself here because this well, is no, important. I'm not, this isn't no, important. this is important. No, no, it's not about okay. you. It's just, this is important because throughout this whole conversation, and we've been going on for, geez, like two and a half yeah. hours. Uh, two and a half hours, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So the the reason why this is important is because I've been I've been just for the sake of getting conversation forward, I've been backing up a lot of what Trump's mustache has been saying and adding stuff to his argument. But this is where we actually like pinnacle the like the key crucial part where I disagree is I so I recognize race realism. I recognize all these different uh, biological functions that you claim. And in fact, it's always really bothered me that the alt right or the right wing on the internet has managed to redefine the term race realism. Because let's be honest, if we go back to the early two thousands or the 90, 1990s and even earlier, oh, just was, look at the history of the science. Let like, me finish. Yeah, it was biological essentialism. That's what the term is. That's what the term's always been. Race realism is just a rebranding that was done on the internet during the Trump election, maybe a little bit forward uh, prior to that. Uh, I would say it's a lot more prior to that, but anyways. But either way, race realism is just biological essentialism. I've never denied any aspect of that whatsoever, but this is where my argument stems from. I, I, I ideologically do not believe that we should be judging a person based on the predictions we can make on their genetics because the opportunity for var variability is still too high. There is a reason why we don't judge people for pre-crime. There is a regional reason why we don't judge people for um, a crime that they may have the potentiality of doing. Maybe this person has a set of genetics that makes them tend to be more violent and higher testosterone than other people. That is still not a guarantee that that person is going to make the choices in life, whether or not freedom of choice, uh, free will is even an issue. The small amount of free will that you have, whether or not that person with a high testosterone and tendency to violence is actually going to break the law and harm people and do something illegal, we should wait until that person actually does that choice and makes that decision before we go and throw them in jail or judge them or kick them out of the country, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that, well, that I understand. We're we, we, going to get a response real quick before you ask. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the big part of the conversation for me, so go. Okay, so do you understand that if you want to do that, you're going to create a lot of problems for the individuals that it's you value freedom. so much? called freedom. Wait, 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 freedom wait, baby wait, no, wait, no 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 wait, no no value it's uh do you understand that it's, you have it's to... called freedom it's the price you pay and it's the razor blade that we dance on for not having authoritarianism or totalitarianism yeah, okay so 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 you're going to suffering for your people to 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 uphold your your 
yeah, your the freedom standard. The, wait, 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 wait. It's okay. Wait, wait, wait. The freedom so for me and my you, people to how have is a that gun. Morally superior to what I'm doing because I'm not I'm, arguing for moral superiority. More, more, moral superiority. I am arguing for activity. If you disagree, that is fine. It's just equally as moral. But I place a higher tendency on individual freedom than you, than you place. You place a higher tendency on survival than I do. I'm only concerned with my individual survival and the survival of my genes. I'm not concerned with anything beyond that. My in group. Do you understand that you have more chance of benefit the group that's going to keep you alive and keep you fed rather than the other group that has no. Oh, I don't trust white Push people any more than I trust anybody else. Oh, we've been over I, this, man. Yeah, yeah. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous to think that you should trust another white person over anybody else. Uh, my in group is even smaller than your guys. My in group is me and the direct people around me, like my direct bloodline. I mean, yeah. my in group is super fucking small. I'm yeah. not into this whole like, oh, I draw my, draw my in group around the whole human race. Hell, if I had control over the world, I would give rights to me, my girlfriend, my family members, and that's fucking it. <laughs> wow. well, uh, um, I do want to sort of point bring up a point because this was what I was going to bring up earlier, but then we decided to move it off to the second question. No, no, it, go for it. Go for it. Okay, so. Do you believe in the bell curve? What do you mean believe in? Hold on, let me take this one, Peter. What, what do, you, do you believe in the race? Believe? Do you be, okay? Do you believe in the racial divide of the bell curve? Is, do you do you believe that the science articulated in the book, the bell curve, is accurate or not? Is that what you're asking? No, me? I'm asking whether or not the bell the bell curve itself. So when you say relates the bell to curve, race, well, are, okay. When you no, are you confusing that no. with the book? Because if you're talking about the statistical phenomenon of the bell curve, not, I'm talking about the phenomenon. I'm not talking about the actual like IQ. Like IQ has been proven, but the okay, racial, but the racial divide given by. I the don't bell curve. know enough. I don't know enough about how. Well, no, this like this is why I'm asking him. Phenomenon. Okay, well, this is why I'm asking him. I'm curious because I'll defend. I'll defend the science in the bell curve. Well, well, what what, what do you mean with the phenomenon? What what the fuck does it mean? The fact the fact that like. Just well, a bell curve. Africa. So let me Google Wait. and define. So a bell curve and the book, the bell curve, are different things. Yeah, a bell curve is a representation of data. Like it's if, the if, most if common, I'm correctly... the most common type of distribution for a variable. Yeah, okay. And due to so... the fact it is known as a normal distribution, the term bell curve comes from the fact that a graph uh, used to a normal distribution consists of a bell-shaped line. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the the idea of the the idea of what a bell curve is as a term is not really relevant to the book. Okay, what I'm asking is, do you believe that the bell curve itself leads to evidence that that says <clears throat> that um, certain races are inferior to others? No, oh, that's because I don't believe that certain races are inferior. Yeah, he. he just, oh, okay. He, he, All right. Never apples mind. To oranges, right? It's like you're asking a. So when you were to, if you're to make a comparison, let's say you you throw black people and white people on an IQ. Well, spectrum. no, like the. Well, no, the entire thing is Let like. Let me finish. Let me finish. You throw black people and white people on a spectrum, and you get a bell curve where black people are tapering off in a lower end than the white people. That what you're doing when you do that is you're asking us to judge a fish on how well it climbs a tree. Yeah. Um. The other thing was like a lot of people who are who are on the right who have been in the past will bring up the bell curve as evidence that black people at least intelligently are are inferior to um like white people themselves but the science okay. but, this, but i would say is the science going behind that is it peer-reviewed which he doesn't believe that that is a thing so it Hold on. is irrelevant Did you say isn't or is the bell curve like the theory like the theory itself which you know lead which oh, like the, the book. theory the book oh the bell, oh, the bell curve itself isn't peer-reviewed with the bell curve as in a representation of data, peer reviewed. No, no, the bulk, the no, no, no. The book, the book itself isn't peer reviewed. Like the book oh, is the part yeah. where people have a lot of contention with. Like the book itself, called the bell curve, is not peer reviewed. Okay, um, I, I don't. I'm not. Hold on, you. I think you're making. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do it. Do it with classes. Well, I'm I'm googling it. Hold on, the yeah. bell curve. Wikipedia peer review. Hernstein and Murray were criticized. Oh, you're right for not mm -hmm. submitting their work for peer review before publication. Mm -hmm. And before, yeah. hold on, before publication, an omission, 
uh, an omission many have seen is incompatible with their presentation of it as a scholarly text. The writer at the uh, online publication Slate, oh God, I can't take that seriously, complained that the book not being circulated in gallery proofs as a common practice to allow potential reviewers and media professionals uh, an opportunity to prepare for the well, to prepare for the book's arrival, why you need to do more studying to disprove it. Well, so many scholarly, this is how biased Wikipedia is. Many scholarly responses to the books late arrived, uh, Richard Lynn. Okay, now they're just going into the responses. Hold on. Of a subject of hundreds of, uh, the book has been subject to hundreds of critical reviews. <laughs> a number of which have been collected in edited volumes, suggesting that the book's lack of peer review, hold on, lack of, it hasn't stated, the Wikipedia article doesn't state whether or not it's actually been peer reviewed. Lack of peer review does not prevent it from being subjected as a subsequent, like lack in terms of there was none or there just wasn't enough. Um, it, there was none. Wikipedia is only one Wikipedia. source that says that there. Yeah, yeah. one set of yeah. scholarly stated that the bell curve. But like what I would have gone, into later was that okay and here's the other problem a lot of other studies such as the one um such as a study put out by uh robert d putnam that also was not peer-reviewed at all before he published it the twin studies which people use in order to prove racial uh divides are also both not peer-reviewed and also contradict each other when people put them together do you know why? which which which, do you, which do you understand why? which twin studies um yeah. i cannot cite them but i know the term twin studies because okay. yeah, but, yeah, but there are the, several. No, yeah, there, is a method that, of... That's a very broad term. Yeah, the, Dude, there are, yeah. There are a on. lot of dis. No, yeah, they, there are. No, but they, I will, but so I know I'll agree with you. There are a lot of disproven <sighs> twin studies, but at the same time, there are a lot of twin studies that have a very uh, tight level of uh, scientific uh, efficacy okay. revolving. Okay, around. what I mean by twin studies, and I do not have the names on me that I will admit to. I should have looked in. I should have quickly looked into that while we had time to prepare for this. But the twin studies that I was going to mention were the studies that have been used to prove that people on a biological level are, you know, are mentally inferior to each other simply based on IQ. Which what, what, has, what is this, this focus on inferior and superior? I don't understand. But but basically, okay, here, here's the deal. Do you know why certain research don't even bother to do peer review? Yeah, because they know it's incorrect. No, there's another reason for that. Okay, what Can is that it? reason? What is that reason? Okay. Because, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. So I don't want to get sidetracked on that because I, 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 I'm not sure what you're disagreeing with here at, right? Do you think that IQ is completely bunk science and not representative of what no. a person is actually capable no, no, of? No, 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 no. I'm not saying okay. that. Okay, but stop. what okay. I'm saying, but yes, what I'm saying yes, is, no, no, no. Let me finish. Let me finish. Uh, you, okay, so you agree with that statement? Do you deny the science that exists, or do you uh, re refute the science that exists that shows different um, IQ potentials within racial groups? Uh, no, okay. I don't refute that. But okay, what so I refute, what's, what's our, what I, our... but what I refute with is using those statistics in order to con in order to come to the conclusion that based on race, certain people are inferior to others, which is a theory that people like uh, uh, Jean Francois Garabé. No, that's some conclusion. That's not a theory. It's a conclusion. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I said the conclusion. If I didn't, then that's on my then that's my fault. But that's a conclusion that people like Jean Francois. Um, uh, Lawrence Southern has mentioned it. Um, St mm -hmm. Stephen, Stephen Molyneux, Tara, Tara McCarthy, mm -hmm. all these other people use in order to prove a more of a racial supremacy side to this whole thing. But if he no. does not believe in that, then that's a mute point. I believe that there is a different IQ level among races. Well, so there, the, no, there's a few different distinctions there. Is that you, you're drawing the line of... Um, like he said, the inferiority superiority thing. Whether or not you categorize it that way, you you recognize the differences. I recognize the differences. That's the point. But I don't even make my argument in the direction of whether or not I accept the idea that inferiority and superiority are entirely subjective statements. So you don't even. I don't even go that down down that down that direction of the argument. What I prefer to do is say that if you're going to say that because this group has a has a higher IQ and therefore, oh god damn it. I'm. I literally just forgot my argument. <laughs> Don't worry about it. it happens. Thanks, that is. <sighs> but yeah, Listen, dude. God damn it. 
<laughs> Sorry. I, I want to go back to the reason why post their their responses anymore. Do you know how how ridiculous peer review really is? Like, do, do you know where it comes from? Where where it was originally uh, created? Peer review. Why why was why people value this so much right now? Why don't you? Because talk? back in because well, back in the day, with, no no scientific replication. Yes, you yes, need to be able to replicate a study to prove if it's true or not. Yes, but there's something called peer review. I think it's wasn't it uh, an organization? If I remember. okay, but peer review in the modern day means that you're able to replicate the results in, or to verify that a study is okay. telling the truth. If you and the reason that peer review is so upheld in the scientific community <laughs> is the fact that if you are not able to replicate scientific results, such Actually, as a certain well, is, we we are kind of being a little fallacious here because there is a a difference between replicating a study and peer review and things like meta studies and when it comes to certain um socials like sociology and and arguments that are made through um secondary sources we don't really back it up the same way because peer review is not held to the same standard where the person who's reviewing your product and and i actually say this as someone who's had to go through the peer review process we don't you don't have to go through um them replicating your study they literally just have to check the citations that you provide for your study and uh, peer review has been proven to be bold. yeah so what were you going to say P, uh, trump's mustache what's the history of peer review? because because uh, th listen scientists this day and age are very biased towards not having the race realism arguments be be correct there's even did did oh, fuck i forget the scientists that uh, tried to prove that uh, racial differences uh, in, in society, the, the, the diversity, was not negatively affecting uh, uh, social cohesion. And he actually found the opposite. And he, it was a red pill oh, so far, big for him yeah. to swallow that he didn't even post it for, for X amount of years because he couldn't bring himself to do it. So there's a, there's a very obvious block when it comes to... Um, when when it comes to especially race Q in in the scientific communities, there are literally scientists that come out and said some things are better not discovered or better not researched. They would just flat out try to hide it or not participate in any way, shape, or form in order for this to not come out. That's how deep this shit goes. So, is it really any surprise that these researchers are getting ridiculed, racist, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera, just don't bother to do it. Well, because, they already know, yeah. because they already know what the fuck the results go going to. Do you think they're going to get a fair shake? Hey, do you remember with, with, with the crowd and T, like, give me the not study. Dude, do you know how fucking long that takes? Do you know how much grant money you would need in order to do a proper knockout study on intelligence and genes? Like, hey, government, well, can I okay. please have some fucking finance yeah, to so disprove this is... the core of your fucking yes, uh, way that you build you... your society, please? Okay, Thank you. Yes, I mean, so let on. me give you let me give you my so I, I get the crowd fallacy, the the name the gene fallacy, or as the vegans would call it, name the trait. I understand. No, it's moving the goalposts. Is what it is. Well, okay, so but I would even establish my goalpost at that point from the beginning because that's the whole like the, the that whole smidgen. That, that whole little microscopic centimeter that humans have that individual choice plays a factor in that you know what a fucking poor kid who grew up in the worst circumstances has the slim fucking chance of making the right decisions and pulling himself up into a good place in life just the fact that that exists alone is enough for us to give the opportunity for people to actually take that opportunity when it's yes there but for you them. cannot build an entire civilization I, on, I, on the on the exception. I'm not no I'm not saying we should be you know funding and dragging up the people who just want to drag themselves down or drag everybody down and not do anything I'm saying that we should at least provide the opportunity for the people who can make their way there because that that's the importance of the individual it's just ideological, so nationalism by ideologically that's where I stand because I need that to exist I would like that to exist for myself and for my children because ah. I think that as being a good a good survival strategy for me and my children and my future generations. And at the same time, if I'm going to ask for that right for myself in a social contract, I need to ask other individuals or I need to at least extend that right to other individuals. Okay, but, but did you know how that is going to manifest? I don't care. My genes will survive. Fair enough.
So well, I guess we came to the conclusion here. They, so to, well, there, there, there's a reason why making more I money than that. father did it. Yeah, no, no, I can respect that. That's that's at least honest. I, I, I it's I wouldn't agree with it. Obviously, I mean, I think I stated very obviously why I wouldn't agree with it. But I can at least respect that. That's a, uh, some sort of self determination. It's something like a, um, I care about my next of kin, even though I you don't see it as wide as as I do. But at least that is a sane position to have. I, I can respect that. Yeah, and, th- and that's why I come down to uh, the, the the whole distinctions that you draw on these lines of why sit with a bunch of people who are like further to the right than me by a long shot and agree with them about the ridiculousness and the dangerousness of the current existing left wing but at the same time once the left wing's defeated all right i'll see you on the battlefield bro no, of <laughs> course i mean dude and, i, I do i have no delusions of, i already know i know this do you think like you're the first is. to say this to an old writer? Come on, yeah, dude. No, no, but, but but exactly. Like that's the whole thing is that it's it really is it, yeah. it's it's individualist ideology, and that's that's where I'll that's where I always pull that horseshoe from is whether or not you're all right or you're control left. You've got this goddamn in group that you've drawn a massive circle around, and you're willing to give a whole lot of lives up for the the idea for the greater good, which all I've ever seen and all history has ever seen is a whole lot of blood from that idea, and I'm fucking sick of it. Right. Well, I guess yes. I'll see you on the battlefield. I mean, uh, dude, I, I'm I'm I don't have, but I mean. Do you think you you know you're not going to win with uh, against the left? Well, so I, you know, I find that one interesting because that's an argument. That's my contention with the left. I turned around to the left years, like a couple years ago, and said, "Look," and this is just me speaking, like you know, broadly. I didn't actually turn around and do this. I nobody listens to me, but like everyone I knew <laughs> right. who was left wing, and, and there were people around me who were left wing, and it was like this weight, like this whole like demonizing of white people, and this whole perception of Republicans, and and telling people they're way off that. And I had a few red pill moments, a few moments where I realized, like, oh God, the media is really blatantly fucking lying to me. The left wing media, or the media that I thought was central and balanced and and whatnot, is blatantly fucking lying to. Me. And and I turned around to the left and went like, look, I thought we were about being honest. I thought we were about like, well, we're not going to punch until we get punched. Like, we're going to wait till war. And then when the other side declares war, we're going to go fucking nuclear. But we're not going to start it. We're, we're going to maintain our principles. We're going to maintain our values. And then I turned around and the left was looking at me, calling me a fucking Republican and me a right winger. They, I, I don't know if I ever really got called a Nazi, but I got called enough of to the right wing as, as sitting here as a liberal. So I don't, I I agree with the right on that perspective, but in the long run, I'm not just, and this ties into all the conversations I've had with uh, Adorite here, the anti-fascist, is that I'm not just anti-fa, I'm anti-authoritarian, I'm anti-totalitarian, I don't care who you are. Left wing, you need to stop demonizing the middle class white people who are libertarian and liberal and believe in that equal opportunity because those are the people who carry the guns, who are, populate the army, and who are well prepared to defend the state for the true values that we have in liberalism. And if you demonize those people, you're just driving them further towards the right. You're driving them further towards the all right. You're driving them further towards the in group that's going to be there with open arms. And what about the people? Them. And what about the people like me who try and like end that stereotype of the left? You try to like change keep that. It up. Keep yeah, it up. Yeah, I say keep, keep it up as well. Don't, I keep don't, it up. And don't preach to us. Don't preach to us. Preach to your group. Pe- preach to your in group because the because I tried preaching that to the in group. I tried preaching that to the left. And you know oh, even I'll did? say this right now. Oh, even so, I'll say this right now. I got called. I told, a Oh no no no! They I got told called me to get lost. I, no, 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 no. I, I tried I've preaching called... that, and I got told to get fuck off. Yeah. yeah well, I've been told See, that I'm a well. No, like just quick tangent. I've been called. I've been called a racist because, and this is like this was a month ago. I've been called a racist because I thought the N word was was not as bad as using the swastika, and apparently that's racist. Oh, See, I'm not sure you... which is worse. <laughs> oh, dude. <sighs> dude. I mean, like, I can so, go. Do you like, understand just, that, yeah. that this is is like okay? Every everybody that's right doesn't start off there. No one starts off and I wanna fucking be hated by the entire society when they have a risk of getting my job lost, etc. 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 Right? There no one starts off. We 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 basically start either center left or center right. 
and and we gradually move there, right? If we can firmly, and I do mean firmly, defeat the left, and we get classless system in place, if we can do that, which I yeah, doubt, yeah. but but let's say that we can, there's no need for me to be ethnonat because if whites are left in a meritocracy, we would flow to the top automatically. So there, there is no problem here. If, if because you understand that, like classes, your your system, no socialism, right? Sorry, no you, handouts from from your you own money to other people. Sorry. Oh no, no, I, I'm not. I'm not entirely. So first of all, I don't consider a social safety net and you know a general community contribution towards a unified system or a government run system to be socialism socialism is full state control of enterprise no community. actually socialism is not state control well it's okay people control state control whatever i don't consider minor forms of it to be actually socialism so i think that individuals should have the right to enter into the social contract that they see fit if your social contract involves everybody contributing to what is considered a welfare system like a health care or social health care i don't think that's socialism that's your choice to enter into that social contract they still operate within a capitalist society all the other then elements of that society on are still capital then see you on the battlefield. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. I, I, I'm all for So, so I, I do think I recognize Marx's critiques of uh, capitalism, and I do think there are elements, uh, certain parts of society that can't be solved through socialism. I don't think that healthcare is necessarily benefited by a race to the bottom or benefited from the idea of. Uh, competition like or even if you're going to have a full capitalist open competition healthcare system there should definitely be a minimum standard that's established you know there should be still health care violations or health code violations and stuff like that there this shouldn't be open free anybody can pollute anybody can do anything but some people would call that socialism some people would call that general government regulation like i'm a capitalist but i'm not a laissez-faire capitalist yeah, so, so so I I want to get the the true definition of socialism. That's just social welfare programs. Well, but I don't think that's socialism. or social democracy. Because so so I'm a fan of social welfare programs, but this is a very distinct thing that I would put on them that I don't think is a, exists. Is I would put um, uh, time restraints or constrictions on social welfare programs, kind of like they do on uh, economic uh, unemployment insurance. They'll just they renew them in other places. What? They'll just renew them. What do you mean renew them? If you run out, you run out. If you've used your limit, if you've been sitting on, and and let's make a distinction. Oh, here. I mean individual. I thought you were like. Oh. Well, let's make a distinction here. There's a oh, difference yeah. between individuals who should be on disability and individuals who should be on welfare. Now, if you're in a position where you've lost your job, or you don't have a job, or you fucking lazy shit or a drug addict or some kind of thing and you end up on welfare i do think there should be some resources with opportunities for you to pick yourself up and then give you a little bit of a boost you know help you out to help you survive and get you going but if you've been on welfare for a year two years and you still can't even find a job at fucking mcdonald's or a grocery store and hold that shit long enough to get your life together then eventually your welfare runs out. Eventually your mooching off the system forces you to, it's either do or die. And that will get people fucking motivated because I think there's a hell of a lot of a, too much of a Okay, but that, that still gives the people that have never worked a day in their life access to your welfare. That they're not for, for a year. I just put a limit on it for a year. <laughs> but Maybe. still a year that you are funding Still, that's better than now. And what happens? And what happens if they? It, oh no! Not Wait, even, hold on. What okay, tr hold on. Like, Trump's what, like eventually. Oh, wait, 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 sorry, too the many reason people. the reason I say that Trump's mustache is because I would rather restrict it in that way than restrict it based on race. I don't want to do your race restriction. I don't want to do your, your yeah. They've well, been it's, it's, it's unlimited to white people, for example. I even want white lazy people to get up off their asses. I'm not interested in the ethno state. I'm interested in the hard work no state. Yeah, you're a capitalist, and and we all know what the fucking detriments of capitalism. Well, even so. in socialism, people still have to put hard work into things, don't they? Yeah, man. Yes, exactly. The lazy. So you can't say it's even a capitalist state when even no, 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 no. I'm I'm saying, what what the fuck, uh, dude? No, 
the, 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 I'm saying the, 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 the oh, fucking Christ, man. Do I really feel this? <laughs> <sighs> okay, so you, I, I I'm, did not intentionally misunderstand me. Um, the, the, the whole socialist thing is I know that if you, you know, you have, you know, uh, you, you, you're lazy uh, people, then they wouldn't get any food either because that, you know, that's not the same thing, uh, welfare programs as socialism. Now, what I said when I said this, that capitalism has its flaws, I didn't mean like in, in a sense of social security. I meant as in, even if you have these social security things, capitalism will fuck up so much other shit that it's just not worth it. Fuck capitalism. Wait. Well, unregulated capitalism will, but there are obviously little pinhole regulations we can place over the, certain. Okay, aspects. I'm going to give you a little bit of a like environmental law. Let's use environmental law. That's pretty okay, obvious. So, 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 yeah, environment. I don't think I, that a company should be able right. to dump. Yeah, I don't think a company should be able to dump toxic waste wherever they please. I think there should be some regulation on that. Sure, sure. Okay, I'm still so, a capitalist. Do you understand that that overregulation after which is inevitable? Is going to completely curb your entrepreneurship. Okay, but you just jump from I just jump from regulation to sustain things like environment to overregulation. Is there yes, not a happy that's, balance? That's, no, that's which is why no. we draw the line before overregulation to make sure that people can still you know do what they want while not making a detriment to society or the world. If we're talking about environmentalism, I tried so, to create a soul. Right. No, no. Go, so go ahead, Peter, because you're going to explain. So there, there's, it's one or the other. There's no middle. The, there is. It's just so fucking difficult to get that right for everything in capital. Oh, come on! You're the great race of white, great race of white people. You can figure. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I think we all know where the fuck everything stands. I, I mean, the, the, like, like for example, I. I when when people say like oh you know just 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 you know uh, capitalism work is if you're just responsible and look up which companies to buy from because you know then you can punish them based on if they're doing the right thing or not. dude we yeah. all know that, that no one is ever done that well no the, there are examples of the market has the the market in North America uh, you go to hipster neighborhoods where you get like a, a, f a food base. Hipster neighborhoods, you come get, on, yeah, yeah, no, no. You get those hipster neighborhoods in downtown where there's a coffee shop that sells like fair trade, all organic, fully compostable kind of shit. And uh. economically, that would be completely unsustainable anywhere else. But because they're downtown in a cosmopolitan, rich neighborhood, they can charge four bucks a fucking coffee, and uh -huh. it makes it it makes it fucking uh, sustainable in the long run. Like literally, the coffee that comes in the cup is less expensive than the cup itself. But it's economically <laughs> manageable, and people aren't doing that for economic benefit. People are literally doing that because it's the the cockles of okay, the first heart of all, that hipsters makes someone to be a good person to, to to have major effects second that but the is point that is is that the, the companies are shifts on morals human morals affect <laughs> economics and capitalism it's not just not a race enough to the not nearly enough you gotta understand that a lot of these corporations are so fucking complex and have such a big ass fucking supply chain that you cannot figure out or it takes literally months to figure out if somebody is actually doing something morally incorrect or not and people are just not going to put in the fucking time i've seen this argument made a thousand times over and i've never actually good results of that actually without any regulation uh, you know the, the automatically yeah. regulating capitalism no you're right i would agree with that it's it's almost it's almost preposterous for a person to try to put in the amount of research that it requires to be an ethical consumer in modern capitalism very much so doesn't mean we can't doesn't mean we still can't make regulations around that in fact we already do right? we already do make it illegal whether or not people skirt past the regulations we still make it so like you're not allowed to abuse animals well i guess that's a relative fucking issue to so, so, so okay so what but with the european union go ahead regulations is is a good thing right Let's not say, all of them I, I, I don't know enough about the specifics. I'm generally anti-scaling up of government. I prefer, to I prefer to balkanize and scale down. But something makes me think that there is a lot of over-regulation involved in what the EU does, but I don't know a specific situation. Something. So, no, okay. I, so, so, so basically, the when EU you go up, right they are, When you go up, you tend to over-regulate. So I don't think the EU is probably... I do think the EU is probably over-regulated. 
I don't think it's okay. Effective. So so basically, what you want to do is is regulate, um, you know, the the the, the to make companies do the ethical thing, right? Now let, let's assume that everything is on the level. These people are all fucking angels, and they're doing it really out of the the goodness of their own heart, right? Let's let's see system working optimal. I am a new player in the fucking industry, and I want to, um, you know, obey all the laws. Now, do you know that? I mean, I used to work for a, right, and the EU made a minor adjustment to the uh, agreement that uh, was was uh, subject to us. Right, we had to hire a company and pay them sixty thousand to analyze all the bullshit they've written for us and i do mean literally thousands of pages of bullshit to get us to 16 pages of what we actually need to do in order to obey that specific adjustment on the law do you understand how in fucking possible it is as a player to get in that industry because of over regulation, and you are killing yeah, entrepreneurs. I don't disagree. That's over regulation. That's a problem. So when you over, not over, I mean, say, oh, um, I'm sorry, we you, have an you, environmental you know, thing, no, and you cut, sorry, you cut this out, and this yeah. and this, and this needs to be this way, and this one needs to be this way, this way, and this is how everything in the environment for this industry is going to go well. The motherfucker still needs to put down 60 grand in order to get the analysis in order for him to know what the fuck he's allowed to do and what not. I don't have so, 60 grand lying around, my dude. So, for example, a couple of years back in, in Canada, about 10 years ago or so, there was a significant deficit in tradesmen, people who were auto mechanics, plumbers, uh, heat and uh, air conditioning, HVAC specialists, etc. So mm -hmm. the government offered a bunch of uh, tax benefits and bursaries and scholarships and money for people who decided to go into college to get trained for those industries. And lo and behold, it reached a point where now we have actually removed those benefits in some provinces because the economy is stabilized and there are enough people to fill that need within the job market. Mm -hmm. So there, you, like, it just depends on the regulation and whether or not the regulation is done appropriate or not. Sure, I can give you tons of examples where people tried to regulate the economy and it turned completely fucking awful. But then there's tons of uh, occasions where the government regulated the economy and it turned out beneficial. FDR. I don't know what FDR is. I'm sorry. Uh, Franklin the, Delano Roosevelt. Well, the he's talking about the... Um, President uh, of the United States from 1932 no, no. to 1944. The, the Great Yeah, I, I still don't know what that or, No, the Great Deal? The, the New called? Deal. The New Deal. The New Deal. It was basically... It was one of the first inventions or first ideas of American... Uh, Keynesian economics post-war where they were like, hey, the economy's suffering. Instead of just trying to reduce regulation and get people to come here and start business, let's take government money and invest it into business and kickstart uh, economies that then get going. And, and also cool. start things like the minimum wage in uh, America. Yeah, well, welfare system. The modern welfare system was pretty much based off the New Deal, I think. Yeah. Like as much as Colossus hates him, I'll, a little side note. But as much as Colossus hates him, he's one of the best presidents that the U.S. has ever had, at least from my knowledge of it. But anyways, wait, wait. When did I say I hated FDR? Wasn't he the trust no, buster? No, Didn't Crambo. Standard oil? Crambo. Oh, oh. Sorry, Crambo. Sorry. I thought wait, I heard the trust buster. Do you mean like uh, the corporation, the monopoly? Yeah, like yeah, I'm so yeah. I, I I'm FDR a capitalist. Is the reason that, FDR is the reason that monopolies do not exist. Yeah, so I'm a but capitalist. But they do the most definitely exist. What the fuck are you on about? Well, you know, yeah, the reason why they true. ended. Oh, they they ended, but we that was Standard Oil and like fucking the Vanderbilts with their railroads and shit like that. Like we do need a little more trust busting in the modern era. Google is yeah. about to own everything. <laughs> Yeah, and, the fact, and the fact that they are legally allowed to get everyone's information without them even agreeing. You, to. It. Yeah. But anyways, you are you are ten minutes from a Google tattoo on your dick, man, from fucking stem to head. I mean, I wouldn't mind yeah, I mean, that I as long as it helps people. I mean, as long as it helps my <laughs> sex life. But yeah. Um. All right. So the one thing I will say is, I feel like that we, I feel like that we've gone through really every single point that we've tried to make without really debating any of them or without going into the nuances of them. Um. Do we just want to end it here because it's been well over three hours?
Oh yeah, yeah, of course. I was not. I was actually we we were tapering off, and unless anybody had a final point, I was thinking the same thing. It's uh, it's good. Mm-hmm. It's all gravy. Yeah. I mean, like I feel like I understand his possession better, and I feel like now I understand a different side to what I will still label as the alt right. But yeah. Well, no, but whether or not you label it as you, this this three hour conversation, I guarantee you gave you more in depth individual topics, information, and areas to uh, study and research and understand than yeah. any time of watching any form of article or thing you're going to read or would, study. Or, well, would, it's also better than. Also... It's also better, more civil than like a lot of the other conversations I've had in the past, especially back when I was sixteen. Like, I'll give you that, man. Like, thank you for being respectful. <sighs> All right, that's why I brought. That's why I brought Peter in. Man. Also, um, when it comes to the, the, this, is a lot through my lens, right? I don't know everything about the alt right because the alt right is huge. I I just no. sit in like twenty servers at most, so I don't know, you know how. I mean, <laughs> it's just like millions of people. I don't know all of them, right? I don't know what they're all discussing. Yeah. It's just you know my specific groups that I'm I'm, I'm with. I mean, I, I've talked to quite a few of them, but again, like my lens, keep that in mind. <sighs> That's all I'm to say. Uh, can I ask you something? Here? Like, oh, how how did me? you become an anti-fascist? What, what um, was like? Easy, because I see the social injustice that is being done in the U.S. and also the rise of far-right politics and how it is detrimental to society, both in the modern day and also looking at the past and how that it and how it really affects people. I'm not going to go into this because I don't know enough about what the United States is. Um, well, okay, it's funny. So if, I, if I can give you well, one second, classes. Go if ahead. I can give you some advice, because if you don't want to buy the book called the Anti-Fascist Handbook, uh, look up on, look up on YouTube. Well, like on, rules for radicals. No, okay, uh, one, sec, one, sec, one, sec, one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. My advice to you is if you really want to understand that ideology, Google, I mean, not even Google, uh, go to YouTube and search up Mark Bray. He is a man who gives much of the philosophy to these people. Um, some of, he is a current, he's currently a gender studies professor at Dartmouth College, and he's the man who people get a lot of his philosophy from when it comes to the Antifa movement. Okay. But yeah, that's what I would say to you. All right. Um, can, I, can I say something back? Did, sure. did, uh, I, mean, I know you have not a lot of um, influence over these people. Uh, and let alone over the mainstream media. But if you keep on taking the rights, any rights, I'm not talking about the old rights. I'm talking about the old light. Uh, no, which is why I specifically... Oh, no. If, if, wait, wait, wait. wait let me, keep taking their way of expression away and push them, push them, uh, the civilization more to the left, even if, if I mean... You, yeah. you understand, but I'm sure what I'm trying to say. Then what's going yeah. to happen, right? Yeah, just like free speech and everything like that. And yeah, like my response to that is, and this is in Canada. Like Canada has a lot of the alt right talking points, at least from my research in it. I would say that the farthest that any country should go, um, the farthest that anybody should go is the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The UK goes way too far, at least from what I've heard, and I feel like that's the stopping point. But when it comes to like you know freedom of expression and reasonable limits on it. That's the extent to which we should go, period. Why should there be limits on it? I mean, I, I know you shouldn't be like... To protect people. Bomb in, in... Sorry? To protect people within society. That's pretty fucking vague. I mean, what does, what does that okay. mean? If, 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 if somebody says... What he says... To make, okay, to make sure that people me. are... Able, okay, well, no, not that, but like... And even though, like misgendering used to be a thing in Bill C sixty, I'm pretty sure you heard about that, but it was an unreasonable limitation. But the thing is, like when it affects a person's ability to live within society, that's what those types of laws are meant to do. How 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 is by that? Make, by how by make, a simple refusal of employment based on race. No, no, that has nothing to do with. Freedom. Yes, it does actually. How? Simple because you, it re- is restricting a person's ability to make a living and to actually live within society. No, 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 no. no. I mean, how does freedom of speech? Sorry. How, how does uh, allowing freedom of speech, uh, you know, limit? Um, easy slam, easy slander laws, threats against people. That's slander, pretty much. The, yeah. But hold on, slander doesn't fall under freedom of speech because freedom of speech is protected. Slander and libel are not protected. Same with harassment. Well, no, well, no it's a well, no, it's a le- like slander and libel are freedom of speech, but we but 
as the Canadian no, Trevor Birds and Humans. No, no, no. Whether or not it's so, okay. So this is important part. This is one of the com complicated conversations where it says, okay, where are we going to um, discuss when we say freedom of speech? What country and what laws and how are we going to go? Are we going to approach it from a broader ideological perspective and just say, okay, all speech is freedom of speech. But when most people, if you're talking about a liberal a uh, classical liberal perspective that exists like in the United States and most of the Western world, most people are okay with saying liable slander and calls to violence or threats or harassment are things that are, don't fall under freedom of speech. So they're not freedom of speech. It, it, it's a semantic argument. I know it's a semantic argument, but it's important here. Because when I say freedom of speech, I'm not saying, I'm not talking about slander, liable, and um, uh, calls to violence, harassment, and threats. Antifa, um, can 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 also say, do you, do you know that the right has been consistently silent on almost every platform known to man for decades now on their the right, guides the right, of of of, uh, of uh, hate the speech right and, and the center more recently even the center yeah, yeah. The center, no, no, more recently the center. and yeah. to an extent and to an extent I disagree with that but the problem is we look at what far right politics has done in the past. And it has ah, done Hitler, nothing. Yeah, but, no, I'm not just talking about Hitler. I'm talking about far right politics in general, allowing people to go out and lynch black people in the United States, for instance. How the fuck is that far and, right? And what about the far left murdering? Like what was was a hundred million in China? Yeah, I would say no. that's also reprehensible because I, <sighs> as I said, I'm against authoritarianism. So why even? Yeah, okay. Oh, because, there we we've go. gone. There we go. Before. You're making it. So you're we've not been, just Antifa, you might be anti Yes, but, but and we've been over this before. The reason that I'm more anti I'm more Antifa is because like fascism and far right ideologies are the more harmful and detrimental thing to society, at least in Canada and the United States. The moment that communism starts to become like threatening or detrimental to society, I will happily slap a black and gold pin on my jacket. So I make an argument here that uh, I don't know if you were in the chat the other night for this, is that you're making a distinction between critical versus chronological or temporal. Um, communism and fascism in the end game represent the th same threat, the same level of, of problem yeah. that we're worried about. Now, as um, I think his name was Masters Peace, who was in here the other night discussing yeah. this, is that communism tends to rise on a much slower and much more uh, paced basis because uh, the, the economic strife that is required tends to take a lot more um, pressure to build up before it breaks. But Nazis or far right wing or fascists tend to run on things like race differences and cultural distinctions and whatnot that are very apparent yeah. and in your face on a daily basis that causes them to rise in a critical manner from zero to a hundred really, really fast. But it still concerns me that Soviets and fucking communists are able to march through the streets in major cities in Canada with their flag waving and have clubs at universities and groups at universities that are publicly registered and funded by those university students committees or students associations. And it, they should be just, I'm not saying that Nazis should yeah. be doing the same thing. What I'm saying is that they should be as underground and suppressed as Nazis are. Yes. Wait, 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 where's, yes. Where's, the, where's the whole um, freedom of speech now coming if you have to? Yeah, that's true. I did go very anti-freedom speech. <laughs> yeah, you did go on a tangent from, uh, from well, so, the conversation so, we had yesterday. So I'll even agree with that about the idea of um, where the government suppresses freedom of speech. So I don't think it should be illegal for them to march through the streets, but I think that it should be. So if, if somebody marches well, no, the streets. No, but society should start to go against the them. But society should start to be like this. No, 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 no. Wait, if you allow Let me finish. Let me finish this point. Let me finish this point. I'm going to throw it out anecdotal. If somebody were to march through the streets out here, <sighs> waving swastika and Nazi flags, people mm -hmm. would throw eggs at them out the windows. Mm -hmm. That's all I ask about the communists, too, is that you throw eggs at them out the windows. I'm not saying that the government should step in and make Deal. it illegal, but I'm thinking that society should no, no, make no. feel good, good luck having FNT for do that. I, I've seen plenty of commie. Do what? You're not fooling anybody, Bo. No. What? What? I've seen plenty of gummy flags among. But that's yeah, what I he's mean. Like, why, why, don't, why don't we throw them. eggs at them? Why don't we treat the guys? Because the Antifa is full of commies. You no, yeah, no, so no, what? I know, You're raising the point. No, no, no. I know, but what I'm saying is, so, so the people 
who rise up through the streets. I'm I'm more I'm thinking the silent majority, the yellow vests or whatever you want to call it, like the middle class should be leaning out their windows throwing eggs at the Soviets or eggs at the communists marching through the streets in the same way that they would throw eggs at the Nazis. No, I'm not saying the government they're, should suppress they're either. your system, not ours. Our system is not in power. They're not revolting our system. They're revolting you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I think it's irreprehensible that we allow them to march through the streets openly and we allow them to have public groups at universities. Allow them societally or allow them lawfully? S societally. Okay. That's like, the main I, point of contention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a problem with that. Like, yeah, I, I, I definitely think that if you're really fucking, if your ideas are really fucking stupid, we should call you out and tell you in public that your ideas are really fucking stupid. Yes, but you, in order for that to do that, you need to actually be able to speak so if you think that our ideas are stupid that's fine yes, okay. but you're I, never going to be able to debunk I, them in public if yes. we're not even able to allow okay. to be speaking I, which in is why there's yes. a line I, if you i agree yeah. i agree and, so and when i said I, when i said throwing eggs that was a little far because that's technically like violence or harassment you're right i don't think we should be surprised but you, you know what i'm saying is i'm just saying is that they should both be treated the same of course, they but this this is this. No, I'm sorry, but but th here here's the deal, right? Right? This is everybody here is just wanting their own ideology to flourish. Y you, you, oh yeah, exactly. So 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 it's like some rules. I, 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 <laughs> God, dude, it's like, dude, no no, you will allow you know the right wingers to have their little freedom of speech so that we can you know mock them and degrade them and put them in their place. I mean, dude, do you do you realize that if we are and we put somebody like Jail Jared Taylor on can stand, you get your ass raped. Yes, but Jer Jer Jared Taylor's not an authoritarian, is he? He, he kind of, I mean, succeeds yes no. in what he wants to. No, but is he no, an authoritarian? Yes, yes, no, if, if he, I think he is. I don't believe he's an authoritarian. I think he might have the similar perspective of you of live and let live. He wants to have his in-group protection, but he's not concerned with being authoritarian around Yes, but the around only him. way you're going to get that is by being fascist at this point. Well, because the left has fucked it up. Okay, then unfortunately, no if, if, Jared, if Jared Taylor is authoritarian, then the yes, I would mock him for being an authoritarian. So, so this is really just who has a... This always... Like... Moving, you know, the all right, or right. you're it not is... understanding what Klaus is trying to say. Well, I'm, I, I, that's that has been my point from the beginning. Is I'm consistently anti-authoritarian. Like, if you're yeah. a liberal, you are anti-authoritarian. You're not just anti-fascist. You're not just anti-communist. You're anti-authoritarian in all forms. If you're a liberal, I don't see how liberals are going to defeat the left because they've been con the past twenty years. So, if you're going to be able to do it, awesome, awesome sauce. But uh, let's just say I'm not holding my breath. Can I actually give you a, a little like black pill slash red pill on why I'd not worried about it? Sure. Because as long as the genetics, and this is going by your own logic, as mm -hmm. long as the genetics that exist within the people who invented liberalism continue on, eventually you'll come back to liberalism. What's that one race of people? who every time they get together and life gets nice and healthy and they reach a critical mass, they start creating a liberal culture. White people, yeah. Oh, every time, right? Yeah, right. But so let's, so, uh, let's keep them around, shall we? So there you go. I'm not, I'm not concerned about it either way. Because that's yeah, yeah. Ah, you mean like that? I just need to be a liberal. I don't need to be a white supremacist. I just need to allow liberalism to right, flourish. Is that what you're saying? It's just, it's a circle. It's a cycle. No, dude, yeah. I wouldn't even mind all that much because at that point, uh, people are, have been safe. So what the fuck is the point? I, I wouldn't even so, mind at that much. So, but that's my point is at the same time, while you, so if, to me, I'm not looking for racial protection for white people. Racial protection for white people just seems to be a biological byproduct of these systems. But if you allow for liberalism, not don't, only will you inevitably end up with the group that apparently invented liberalism, but in the same time, you'll have the protections that Adorite is seeking for certain people who are not so liberal. But I'm asking us for, for one thing, 
is that when it does come to our liberal values, if you really don't believe our liberal values, if you don't think that you should have freedom and, and the right to defend yourself and the right to defend your family and the right to live and let live and live your life as you see fit, then you should get the fuck out. I don't care about the color of your skin. You could be the whitest boy imaginable. But if you don't think that I'm allowed to do whatever I want as long as it doesn't affect you, then get the fuck out of my liberal country. Damn, man, you got some daddy issues, my dude. But what's what's going to happen? What's going to happen? It's going to result. If your race realism is correct, and I'm not yeah. saying it is, but if it is, that is going to result in an inevitable filter for just white people. Then what's the I concern? Know. And that yeah, 2% or whatever know, small percent? Ethno-nationalism is my proxy. I get that. It's, dude, it's, here's the deal, though. But it's not. You're not going to fix it. No, no, because I'm not, not, I'm not, not, not an, an ethno-nationalist. Because I have no issue. No, I know. I don't care if you claim to be one. I don't claim. I don't claim that you are, and I don't care that that you want to take that. Uh, I'm inherently. I care against about it, results. But I'm, I'm inherently against it. But you're going to create that effect based if you if you have your autistic liberalist if you, state. If your science you're is going right. to. If yeah. your science is right, then yeah. yes. By logic, yes, but I don't know if your science is right, and I don't really give a shit because I'm just concerned about the values. Okay, so but that that's, that doesn't put us at odds. But what what does puts us at odds is I don't believe your liberalism right now is going to save the West. It is the West. You wake up every morning. And neither is ethno nationalism. Yeah, but communism is though. Trust me. So then, why fight for communism instead of ethno nationalism? Sorry, or why not? Or why not forget ethno nationalism and fight for communism if you think that communism wait, wait, what, what, is what, going to save the West? What? What? No, I said that it wouldn't. What, what? What's your solution then? Well, that's that's the four. Actually, so this here is the fourth position. So it's really funny because yeah, uh, uh, Trump's mustache. You said, well, liberalism's not going to save the West, and and yeah. I said liberalism is the West, and then he said neither is antifa, and you said, or sorry, he said neither is fascism, and you said neither is far left or communism. And that's where Dugan in the fourth political theory is, is that the, the idea, and I know it's a meme, but the idea that none of the three positions that have been put forth are really optimal for solving the problems of the West. And, and the idea that is going to develop in the future, that the whatever system or, or set of programming that humans adopt that evolves from this weird capitalist, socialist, liberal argument we've been having for 200 years is going to be something that obviously works because humans adapt and evolve, but we're not going to be able to recognize it until it starts to actually happen. Future well, then I guess we'll just have to play our parts. Yeah, exactly. We're just yep. going to fight out that the, the the far left, the far right, the center, everybody's going to play out their parts. And in the long run, the environment is really, and the genes are really going to determine it. Like the genes are going to adapt to the environment. The environment is going to uh, is going to change according to how humans change it. And boom, there's no, there's no right, wrong, more left, right. <laughs> Anybody's going to end up, there's no prediction. She's going to play out. And as long as the genes pass on, then that's all that matters. Wait, there's no prediction? What about my astrology? <laughs> <laughs> Coming from someone who does somewhat believe in that, but yeah. Anyways, uh, the, is that the ending point that we want to take? Yeah, let's, let's, let's round it I up. guess. Yeah, everybody just does his part, and we'll see how it goes. Dude, I've, I've drinking like, I've drinking like a fucking way too much. I'm on joint number three. We're doing good. We're doing good here. You enjoy the generous. Well, we'll enjoy our degeneracy. We'll yeah. pull. Um, how do you pull the bot out of the chat? Um, I think it'll just leave as soon as we leave. Oh, all right. Let's go down into VIP or tavern there and chill. All right. Um, I'm gonna take my leave. Uh, thanks, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank well, you. Dude, and again, guys, yeah. yeah. And again, both, thank you both. for being. Thank you for being. Um, just respectful and not being like a complete moron. Like. Not with politics, but just with attitude towards other people. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mustache. All right. See you around. Hey, so that's why I brought you two in here. And thank you both because I enjoyed listening to this whole conversation. I've enjoyed participating in it. All see right, you guys. Bye-bye. Thank, <laughs> Bye -bye. thank you for listening. Like, share, subscribe, and join us in the Nameless Debates Discord. We hope to see you there.